Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Hearts TV and Radio. Today, we are continuing our preview to the playoffs, with Hearts being represented at three of the four levels throughout the leagues in Britain. And today, I have Andrew Cornish and Greg Boshan, the fearsome duo that have led the Hawks to the Double A playoffs. How's it going, guys? Very good. Thank you very much, Ken. It's uh, good to be here. It's going well, going well. Very good. Well... Congratulations, firstly. I, a fantastic, uh, fantastic effort all round to get to the playoffs. How do you guys feel about that? I, I think uh, I'll take that one. Uh, we're both very happy. Um, basically, if we look back at the start of the season, I think uh, we, we lost six of our, our major players um, from last year. And uh, we've still been able to, to get into the, the playoffs again this year, which is our second consecutive year. And, and that's got to be uh, a big thumbs up from us. I guess that's a big part of the uh, the Hearts setup as it is, is we have teams in each of the leagues and therefore as players progress, they do move up the tables. How did you, uh, how did you cope with losing those players and, and how did the new players that came in to fill those shoes do? Did they, you know, big boots to fill, I guess? Well, yeah, we were able to uh, get a couple of players back that didn't actually play last year. So uh, one of the big pluses was Hunter Devine. Um, he, he went away and did a lot of work last year. Um, but this year he's come back flying and uh, carried on with with how he was a couple of years ago. Um, we've also had Ross Asquith come back into the team, and uh, he's been revelation on the bases. So um, both of those players are, are really plus points. Um, we've also had quite a lot of other players that have really stepped it up. Um, I don't want to name all of them, but the big highlight was obviously Nick Russell. Um, he had a 0.83 ERA throughout this season, and to have some uh, at least one game every week it makes everything sorry Dan did that briefly um, I, think, uh, I think you're probably saying that uh, Nick's performance on the mound has been truly staggering hopefully we might have re-established uh, connection uh, briefly but um, are there any highlight moments of the season that you can think of uh, you know plays or, or games or, or anything like that 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 either turned the season around or, or, or really gave you that drive to, to push on and, and do as well as you did? There, there, there was one game that really stood in, in my mind, um, and I actually highlighted it before the, the season started, and that was the game against Guildford. Um, first game we played against them, we were able to, to come back from 5-0 down to win the game 6-5 um, with a, a walk-off hit by Hunter Devine. So it uh, kind of all brings it together. Though that was the first game, and then unfortunately um, we went to, to lose the next game, uh, twelve to one. So it, it kind of shows you what kind of uh, help the pitching has on on our levels. Um, but yeah, that, the first game in particular was it was a huge highlight. Um, throughout the year, though, we've we've had a couple of other games which you really kind of understand why why you play baseball. Um, Sidewinders game where we lost five four, but it was a very close game the whole way through. And uh, it, it kind of just makes you enjoy baseball and enjoy going out on a Sunday and uh, just makes everything worthwhile. Yeah. And of course, we've had a, a pretty, um, pretty lucky season as far as the weather's concerned. Last year was uh, rained out for several weeks on a, a, in, a, in a row. And that continuity must have helped just to know that you can play and, and know that you can get on and, and do what you want to do and, and not have to worry about rescheduling and, and trying to sort out players all the time. Yeah, certainly. Unfortunately, we, we didn't have that many games. We only had uh, 16 games throughout the season um, due to teams folding and not having a full schedule to start with. Um, so there, there were big gaps in between when we were playing. So there, there was a, a couple of times where you were waiting two, three weeks to have a game. Um, which, which is good in some senses, but also bad in others. You, you don't get the chance to, to go and, and play in, as a team. Um, you can go and help out a few other a few other teams, but there are a few weeks where people aren't there, um, aren't around, and you, you do struggle sometimes. And I have to say thanks to a couple of the guys that were able to come down and help us out for a few games, especially the Pirates game um, down in Croydon, where we were really struggling and we were able to finally get... Um, three players to come and help us out so it, with an uh, organization the size that we are you are able to phone up people and, and get them to come down um, but yeah it wills a struggle every now and again yeah i'll be honest yeah 
Well, yeah, uh, recently we spoke to uh, Matt Crawshaw, the BBF Youth League Commissioner, uh, about some of the youth games and, and, and also a bit about how Hearts has really benefited from some of the younger players uh, uh, coming in a- across our leagues. Um, have you had any of the youngsters in your team this year and, and, and what have they been like? Uh, yeah, we, we've had two um, that have been with us most of the year. Um, we've had Callum and Jose. Um, both the players have done well. Um, their bats uh, are really good. Um, you can see them when they go up. They're, they're not afraid to, to swing at a ball that's right in the middle or something just on the outside and make good contact. Um, we also had for one of the games um, some of the other guys come down and their, their gloves on the, on the other side were, were also exceptional. Um, Carlos Jr. Was, was absolutely fantastic and uh, he helped us out of a, a couple of jams. So, yeah, they, they just know how to play. And to have those mechanics early on is certainly excellent skills um, that you know some of the, the other guys might not be able to get hold of. Well, as I said the other day, this is traditionally a time of the season where much of Hearts would be looking to their uh, golf club bags and, and, and proverbial other uh, hobbies to fill their time as the baseball season ends. Uh, but that's not the case this year. We've, uh, across the leagues, done extremely well. Uh, so looking forward now, and, you know, it's, it's season job well done for you guys, but uh, more to come. So what are your plans for the playoffs? How do you think you're going to do? Well, we've obviously got the game this weekend, so that's the, the 25th of August down at Hearts um, against the Sidewinders. And as I said before, we had a really close game with them um, only a couple of weeks ago. So I can really see that going down to the wire. Um, we've got a good, strong squad that we're going to put out. And, you know, <laughs> it's a case of um, anything can happen in those games. And I remember a game against the Sidewinders last year um, where we split against them down in in Enfield and basically it all hinges on a couple of plays and luckily sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't um, but yeah certainly that, that this weekend is a, is a big odd game um, if we are able to get through that one um, we come up against the weekend after um, it'll be against the London Mammoths which is out in London um, so it's always good to go down to London and, and play at a different location and, and see what's down there um, <laughs> I think everyone's kind of looking forward to getting out to Farnham Park to be honest we've got this new venue and uh, all the playoffs are going to finish there so if to get to that location and uh, to play on those kind of fields it's it's something that you can really push forward to and uh, and hope that we get there um, <laughs> I think that covers it everyone doesn't everyone wants to get to Farnham Park of course. That's, that's where it is so um, everyone's going to do their best together Indeed, and um, I, well, the, the the playoffs all the way through are uh, a full, long game format. There's no double headers, so is it fair to say that you will be looking towards uh, Nick Russell to uh, to lead from the mound? Well, he's not actually around this weekend. Um, <laughs> that but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, he he certainly was uh, something that helped. But we have got other pitchers that can come in um, one of the plus points this year was Slater and he's Slater coming in and uh, throwing a lot of pitches and, and getting a few games unfortunately he's not there either so we're uh, we're, we're down to somebody else and um, Greg's going to be leading this one this weekend so um, I'm going to be calling him every at least half an hour to see how he's getting on <laughs> leading from the front in, in, in all respects <laughs> um, okay well guys thank you very much for your time That's, uh, and all the best luck really uh, you know, to, to, to yourselves and all the rest of the Hearts teams uh, as well but um, you guys are up first so do the job and uh, we'll see how you do we, we plan to do our best Ken and, and uh, I'm sure that we'll do, do well thank you very, very much and just Greg Boshan from the Hearts Rap. So into the playoffs for uh, certainly the first time in recent years uh, and part of the fantastic Hearts efforts uh, on the road to Farnham Park. This has been Hearts TV and Radio. Good night.